Some days you just want to get home and play with some retro tech that's waiting for you from the post office. Um, other YouTube channels like to spend time to make a good video, so I tried to make a good video today. But as ever, something goes wrong. Hi, I'm Dr. A and welcome to the back office teardown lab. Now, you can see I'm professional today. I don't normally do these things immediately after work because I like to chillax as we all do. However, I was too excited by this. Um, one, because I think I know what's in here. And two, look at these stamps. Raspberry Pi stamps. Now that is pretty damn cool, isn't it? A first class stamp in the UK with the old Raspberry Pi. And there's another engineering marvel. Before I just jump onto that, look, look at these little showing you the SD card in and all of those things. But look at this. This is the Falkirk wheel, which uh, joins two canals together. And it's basically, I think instead of a lock, it's like a rotational thing, which uses the water and the weight of the boat going down to lift the boat going up. That's a wonderful thing. So don't we have such nice stamps at the moment? Now the contents of this box is something that I have been lusting after for the best part probably of, um, what would it be? Maybe, I was gonna say 30 years, but it's probably a bit less than that. But let's say, let's say more or less. God, that's blunt now. Um, and uh, from the times when I had my Atari ST, and when I saw this sort of come up for Facebook, and I could see the individual on there, I think he was kind of curious on how much it was worth, obviously taking up room in his garage. Um, I sort of said, okay, I'll, I'll give, a, give you a bit for that and got it, I think, quite reasonably. I won't reveal the price because it, maybe it was too much and you're going to go, you idiot. But when I used to code on my Atari ST and STOS, I'd always wanted, in addition to the sound digitizer cartridge so I could record sounds like, for like, yeah, imagine it's a fighting game. I always thought that the thing in here Ooh, would uh, be the ultimate addition to that setup, so I could produce some proper good games. Proper good. And, look, it's nicely wrapped, so it's probably an original box here. Put that. I'll take off my watch and wedding ring, so we don't uh, incur anti-static things. Okay. Um, ooh, look at that. It's got pristine artwork on it. Period artwork. And I think, is that the bottom of the top? Can't quite tell, I think it's that way round. And I thought if I had this, this would really accompany that sound thing to give the perfect setup. And look, it's a hand scanner. A hand scanner for the Atari ST. Look, there's a floppy here and it says, da data scan. And it has the old cartridge with cartridge interface. Like straight, mm, it's got a, it's got an interesting smell. Hard to describe that smell. There's some power there goes in there, and it's it looks a little bit like a Sinclair power supply. No markings on it whatsoever. Should we test that? We'll test that before we power this up. And there's the hand scanner itself. Now, if you haven't seen these, um, basically they're like your scanner in your printer at work or at home if you've got one of those multi-function ones which still have a fax machine that nobody uses and the idea was you basically let's say you wanted to scan a picture of that disc you take your picture in your magazine and you'd hold it over there and you'd push the button and then you would basically run it like that quite steady pace and I can't remember how it uh, you know maintained that pace and then on the screen it would show your sort of picture just appear and you can see here you've got a scan button you've also got black and white and three modes of dithering so the idea I had is that I would uh, you know have loads of pictures posing in fighting positions like any martial arts game of course and then you would um, scan in those photos and then when you made your fighting game in STOS you would uh, be able to uh, have your graphics to match. Now, unfortunately, look, the screw is here behind this label and I can't, I can't bring myself to puncture the label to get in there to see what's in there. But you can see just about, if you look in there, some lovely, lovely chips in there. They're probably buffers. 
it's probably quite a simple interface and it's probably just fetching in the data and it's there might be some sort of parallel buffering or something like that but the hand scanner itself i'm kind of i'm not i don't know if i'm surprised or not but it's it's just it says mitsubishi and i didn't even know mitsubishi made it, these things made it made these things there doesn't seem to be much uh, to go wrong with that so i think what i'll do is i'll plug this in let's plug in this really crusty looking thing look at this plug <laughs> why is it so big it's got a power bulge on it okay plugs in i'm gonna check the old voltage <laughs> 12 volts basically the full 12 volts so i guess there's nothing really left to discuss then uh uh, go try this. So you can see my Atari ST is set up here, uh, ready to go. I haven't plugged in the hand scanner yet because I want to make sure the software and everything else is installed first, just in case, because there could be a, an issue with the software, or there could be an issue with the hardware, I want to eliminate those things. You'll notice I've got an external floppy, that's because I've got a GoTech internally. By the way, if you've got an Atari ST, never get a GoTech. Always buy a Satan disc or an Ultra Satan. On a machine like this that has a hard disk interface, there's literally no need to lose your floppy drive to a horrible GoTech. They really are crappy compared to the disk images you can get like this, which contain virtually everything on an Atari ST that was ever made. Right, um, I've got the floppy here though. I'm going to plug that into the old B drive here. Let's check to see what we've got on there. Yes, we do have our software, and you can see here it's uh, assigned date that scan plus. That's probably what we want. But before we do that, let's copy this over to the one of the f drives uh, that we've got on our SD card. It's getting confusing here. I'm thinking it's a drive. No, it's an SD card hard drive. So we'll make a folder on there called scanner on our drive C. You can see the light there flashing. It's created it on the SD card. So I'm going to go into scanner. I'm going to click on the floppy, and I'm going to, oh, I'm going to rush and make a mistake and click cancel. And then I'm going to take a bit more care and make sure I keep the mouse button pressed down properly, and then move it across to here. Number of folders two. Number of files eleven. Preserve date and time. Yeah, go nuts. So you'll notice it's a little bit slower than the uh, when we do use the hard disk or GoTech because it is the external floppy, but again, it's fine. There's always that worry when you hear it tick, 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 because you go and thinking, is that floppy still good? Fortunately, it sounds like it's still intact. Phew, that's a great success. Now I'm just gonna turn off the machine and plug in the hardware and we'll resume again with the hand scanner attached. God, it's been a long time since I've plugged a cartridge into an Atari ST. There we go. And we're going to have to plug in the power. And we'll take care making sure this goes in the right way. So our perfect vintage retro setup is ready to try out. As soon as it boots, We'll get in there and start scanning. Okay, we're ready to go. I've put it into medium resolution because this program requires at least medium resolution. So that's fine. Scanner, here we go. Datscan Plus. GDOS has not been installed. Printing via GDOS is disabled. Fair enough. Ooh, so we've got the whole UI. And the first thing we're going to need is something to scan. So I'm going to scan a page from this Attack of the Flipping Skeletons by Stuart Ashen. And I think there is some nice high contrast images in here of Hello Guy. So they're going to put him there, right there. 
Probably not the uh, advised place to do your scanning on top of your computer, but I think it will be okay for now for our overheat. So I'm going to go to F1 scan. What happens? Do I just push F1? Ooh! Is it doing something? Yeah. Nothing so far. You can see I've done what any sane individual would do and get out their spare Atari ST and it still doesn't work with it. So I think we gotta take this back to the back office. Go, oh, like a lot of things in my life, it turned out to be an embarrassing failure. <laughs> so that's a bit of a disappointment, isn't it? This thing not firing up. However, I'm glad the software worked. We're at least that far in. Now, it's all a bit soft now, soft and malleable. But there is a screw in there. Looks like a big old wood screw. Have a look at that. That's got some clout on it. Mm. <laughs> Will nothing fit this? This is like an old fashioned screw that you can't use modern, modern size screwdrivers on. Anyway, glad I did that. There's no way you're getting this apart without getting that wood screw out. Do feast your eyes. So here's the opportunity, the rare opportunity for somebody to have a look at this board just in case you want to try and remake this yourself. And I think I might have already just spotted something that looks a bit suspicious, but I'll show you. I'm going to put it here on this bit of bubble wrap for you. That is the top side. So it says there, clearly, data scan. V1.0. And you have all these chips. MP8936U. Hmm, I wonder if that's the chip or if the DM74LS 240N. I mean, the 74LS 240, 244, they sound more like the actual chips, don't they? The DM side. Either way, there you go. That's what it is. And on the back, have a look. You could easily replicate this, can't you? I'm sure just from looking at this alone on the camera, you could do that. Just take a still image. Chichink. And there you go. Make your own. Let me know how you get on. I'll send you the software somehow. Right, now the problem I think we've, uh, we've got going on here is, if you look closely, I certainly see one of the pins here looks to be sticking out quite far. Um, makes me wonder if it's pushed out. So I'm gonna just see if that pushes back in. It could be an easy fix if it is. Hooray, that did go back in, but let's see. Why well, kind of half it? Yeah, look, do you see that pin pushes out as we push that in? That doesn't look too healthy at all. What I'm going to do is see if I can just push that in, wedge it in a bit tighter. And if that is the problem, in the end, we might just apply a bit of glue or something. Might be just wishful thinking there, of course. In it goes. Nope, it's always getting pushed out, so I'm gonna pop that in. I just had a bit of a theory, you see. I kind of suspected, and I'll uh, probably remove the bubble wrap, I was just thinking this is probably really electrostaticy. That when you power this up from the mains, I kind of feel that the hand scanner bit should just always be running and then it sends probably a serial data stream down to this. That's my gut feeling where it's gonna send you, uh, you know, so many bytes of actual data and other bytes of the uh, tracking information of the roller. That's kind of what I feel it'll do, or it'll send a pulse. Every time the roller goes, it'll send a line of pixels, something like that. There is power there. Just gonna put that in. Right, so I have to admit, I'm not seeing anything on our scanner, so there's no lights or illumination or anything going on. We've got one cap, it's probably all right. In fact, let's trace that circuit. 
And that does go to the scanner. So let's see where we go with that. So. So that's the that's the positive here and I'm reading this as a negative and we'll just check that over yes that is the negative side of that capacitor so the negative is going to there and can we get us a positive I probably need to look up the specs of that hand scanner to be sure but we'll now put into continuity mode we do have one somewhere. Do you want to see? There's no power going through there, but it's, it's very odd because these are amazingly thin traces. There's a really thick, to show you, there's a really thick ground trace there. But even looking at the top of the board, I can't see, you know, going around through here, a fat positive trace which is highly weird. I mean, that must mean that this just uses virtually no current in operation, which is, a, you know, it's got those all these LEDs in it. You expect it to be using something. Ah, I'm going to take this apart so I can just see if we can get power into this. And then if I can get power into it, I can figure out some of the pinouts and then work out if there's any power going into the cartridge adapter thing. It's all a bloody nightmare. Warranty void if opened. Although that is caught. Do you think someone's been in there? Possibly the original owner of this plane with their Atari ST and they couldn't get it working either. Ooh, fancy schmancy. So there's the uh, mirror and there's the CCD that all of this goes into. The data hits that magic eye. Twisty knobs buttons and switches as your scan button now let's see if we can discern whoa huh. look at that this is modded I wonder you see there there's actually a mod here I wonder if uh, the company that made this um, actually factory modded standard units like PC units to make it work because that definitely Definitely looks a bit dodged, doesn't it? Right, just looking at the wires here. For the power. Some investigative success. I have checked the power rails on the uh, hand scanner here and I've used that to work out. So I've gone through back through the wires, up the wire, and then worked out it terminates at this little pin here, which is connected to this side of this three pin device that looks suspiciously like a transistor, although it's a bit thin. So I'm wondering if it's a regulator because coming from here, which is the 12 volts, I can see through the other side of the board, it looks like it might be coming there. So let's check that first. And if it is, we'll wallop that part off and see what happens. Maybe this thing is running. Maybe it's just not sending power to the head unit, I say head unit, hand scanner, crikey. All these old technologies that don't have words that exist for them anymore. And so in fact, we can actually, we could even disconnect that really. Now we should be able to read a decent voltage between some of these pins though. I can see it here, this trace there it's going straight to that pin there. Let's get some continuity. Definitely, I'm testing continuity there. This is weird though, this is why I'm kind of curious about this because I should be getting a consistent voltage reading here. Yeah, that's better. I don't, maybe it's just this thing. Could that be knackered? Ooh. So if you look at my meter, it is flicking. Let's just see if we can... Mm, could just be the meter connection. Wouldn't be so lucky that it was just a bad plug, would it? Nope. 
So let's take that out and have a look, see what it is. So tiny. Just going to clip it off. She might be able to get it from this side. Success. Mystery, a ZTX753. That sounds exciting, doesn't it? We'll pop that in our component tester and see if it gives us anything. We've got our old transistor. Go away to the bucket of shame with you. Just pop that in. Ooh, it's a PNP transistor. So pin one is the collector, pin two is the base, and pin three is the emitter. Seems happy enough. Ooh, do you see that red LED by my finger here? Tracking. If I push the button, illumination. So it seems to me that the scanner itself is working. What I did is I actually put a jumper across the PCB where that PMP transistor is, so the power is just kind of going straight through. The power's not being operated by this card, so it kind of means we're getting closer. I did have a think about this, and I did confirm the Atari ST cartridge port is actually working because I do have another peripheral, and because I tried it in my two different STs, they have two different t TOS versions. So I'm kind of thinking it may well be down to this. So I'm going to try to pop that PMP transistor back in there and start to think about the other two devices on here, which could be, we know, a suspect to age related things. And that's the capacitors. But other than that, I might have to start really going into this deeply and figuring out how it actually works. Okay, let's get this new transistor in and try it out. We'll start the process. Oh, did you see that? I definitely saw a bit of something happening there. Let's try again. I think maybe the wire hit the keyboard. Oh, it's going really quickly. Oh, I think we have to select how much. So let's say we want this much area. Ready? Ah, there you go. Good. So we can see now there is some definitely some scanned imagery on the right there. You can pan around. Hello, hello you. Right, how do we clear? F7 to clear. F7. Where do we click? Where do we click? So it's a bit of a weird user interface, I will uh, admit. Um, I think they've uh, certainly we're pioneering in their approach. So we're going to do F1 scan, and I think the weird thing is, I think you've got to kind of select a portion here of this area, and then you have to kind of go over here. I'm pretty sure you have to right click. So when I right click, that flashes like ever so quickly, like it's got power. But do you see how that just it just sort of ended? It's weird. It's like it may well be that it still needs. A little bit of a mod. No, there you go. Look. So now you can see a reasonably good scan. So there's 
the picture from the book. Again, slightly narrow looking in this window. Um, and there's the writing, hello, and there, I'm Stuart, aka Ashens. I make vid for YouTube, write script something, because it's kind of chopped off because I didn't set it long enough. But that's, that's pretty much it. And with that, you'd then be able to save that and then put it into your games on STOS. Or uh, I guess use this, it's got a kind of crude little editor, this thing. Um, so you can just modify it slightly, in a way. It's pretty weaky, weaky, weedy pen function. And you've got a bit of a Phil, look, F8 is Phil, Phil Collins. There, so hopefully that's been of some use to you, uh, the Mitsubishi MH10F5. But more importantly, the data scan for the Atari ST. And let's remind ourselves, data scan plus by Kempston Data Limited. Ah, 15 Sun Lane, Norwich. It's interesting actually because Kempston is in 182A Bedford Road, where it says Program by Concept Coding. So it's a collaboration. So thank you very much, Colin Harvey. And if you're still in existence, please let us know how to work this. Do you have a manual for us? As ever, thanks for watching.